treasure that is you. He calls me, he has made me a peculiar treasure. I'm so peculiar. I'm so glad I'm God's peculiar treasure. Thank you, Jesus. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice, Above all people, for her, the end is mine. I'm so glad, I'm God's peculiar treasure. I'm so glad, thank you, Jesus. When abbreviation goes wrong. Good day, everyone. Welcome to PT Square by Glad Treasure Stores. Like I have said, that in PT Square by God's grace, I shall be sharing with you my thoughts on different topics, stories, movies, personal readings, experience, observations, and the likes. If you haven't watched the previous episode on PT Square, you can enjoy our productions, previous and new ones on our Facebook pages, God's Peculiar Treasures International Ministry or God's Peculiar Treasures International and also our YouTube channel, GPTIM TV. And of course, do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That will be well appreciated. We also encourage you to click on the notification button to be alerted when new videos drop. God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Today's topic is when abbreviation goes wrong. When abbreviation goes wrong. Abbreviation or what you call acronym. What is abbreviation? It is a shortened form of a word or phrase. It is used in a place of the whole word or phrase. It is often referred to as a short form of a whole word or phrase. For example, we have ATM with the full meaning of automated teller machine. A stands for automated, T stands for teller, and M stands for machine. Another example is ASAP or ASAP or ASAP or whatever you want to call it. The full meaning is as soon as possible. A for as, S for soon. A for us and P for possible. M O G, man of God. O M G, oh my God. When many of us see L O A, what comes to your mind? To some, it means laughing out loud. Mm -hmm. Some interpreted it as lots of laughs. As a matter of fact, there is a disagreement on the full meaning of L O L. Some believe it means Lucifer, you know, you know now. We have so many abbreviations that people use now that they don't care to know the full meaning nor the origin. Do you know that many of us don't even bother to know the full meaning of OK, not to even talk about its origin? My assignment for you on PT Square today, go and do your research on OK and feel free to share your findings on this platform. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do abbreviate Christmas as Xmas. What do we mostly use X for? Either for wrong or cancel in most cases. When you replace Christ with X in Christmas, what do you have left? I am just asking. Trust me. I'm not here to condemn anybody. Jesus has not come to condemn the world. So why should I? Who knows whether some of us don't even know the full meaning of X Max again? My general observation is what I want to share with us today. I find it so funny seeing us, us, I mean some of us, or should I say many of us, abbreviating in Jesus' name as IJN after powerful prayer points. Initially, it wasn't a concern, so to say, because I thought we were trying to reduce the cost price of our text messages on network. It has now become a real concern when I now realize that even in our WhatsApp, 
and Facebook messages, we are now used to some abbreviations like LLP, meaning long life and prosperity, IJN, meaning in Jesus' name, IJMN, meaning in Jesus' mighty name, or IJPN, meaning in Jesus' precious name, just to mention a few out of many. How on earth do we abbreviate the important aspect of our prayer points? I'm just wondering, are you seeing what I'm seeing at all? Do you know what? Some people are used to abbreviating words to the extent that it has affected them in their examinations. We sometimes do things unconsciously without meaning any harm. And if you are not called to order on time, we may live to regret it later in life. Many things we have found slip away from generation to generation. Why? Because we are somehow careless with it. There are some good customs, traditions that are morally good, but are nowhere to be found now. Habits or practice like greetings, praying before eating, praying before going out and when coming in, and all sorts that have become old school are seriously affecting many things now. I remember those school days. If you are careless with any of your belongings and they eventually help you to see it, they will announce on the assembly ground. The announcer will say, lost but found. And our response will be, careless owner. How many of us identify with this scenario? In order not to become the careless owner, we should encourage ourselves to do things right. First Thessalonians 5, 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and beat each other up as you are already doing. Let us be conscious of doing things the way we ought to do it before it is too late. Let us always write the most important part of our prayers in full. This is not a religious preaching at all. King Solomon advised us to do everything to the best of our abilities. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 10 says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your strength. This we can as well apply in every area of our lives so that we don't find ourselves getting used to doing our things shabbily. In order not to mislead the coming generation who might not care to do research on the full meaning of some of our abbreviated words, it is better to repent before it is too late. Freedom is only one generation away from being lost. What we don't do regularly or use regularly cannot be expected to be treasured by the coming generation. God told the people of Israel in Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9. He said, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and your gates. And he even encouraged them to tell their testimony or encounter to the next generation because he knows how easy things could slip away from us. Joel chapter 1, 1 to 3, you can read that. Hebrew chapter 2, verse 1, admonishes us too, and also in Thessalonians 5 to 1. If you read all these scriptures, that is what they are teaching us. I know some of us are doing this unconsciously. Some, the Holy Spirit must have nudged us one time or the other, but we thought it is not a big day. After all, many people are doing it now. Please, for the sake of the coming generation, for the sake of the coming generation, let us do things right. This is not for us to argue, abuse, judge, or to point a pleasing finger to anybody. You might not be guilty of this, but what about other areas? We all have one area or the other. We still need God to help us to be fat. And it will surely help us in Jesus' name. So, if you are guilty of this, please don't feel bad about it. Let us just receive the word of God with humility and change. James 1.21, the big part that admonishes us to just change and accept this with humility. 
please know that if you are corrected by God, you are counted as a son or daughter, and you should therefore be happy. Hebrews 12 says, don't give up. If you mistakenly do it again after this correction, don't give up. Just ask for God's grace until you fully master the correction. Let us help one another to change for better. And if you need to correct people about it at all, please do it in love. It works better that way. Most times, we lose sight of some important things unconsciously. And that is where watchman's assignment is appreciated. When others are sleeping or dozing off, he or she wakes them up in order to escape impending danger. God shall surely help us all in Jesus' name. How we sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. How we sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth will I make no thy faithfulness thy faithfulness with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will, to all generations, I will talk about his goodness, his mercy, what he has done. What about you? Let's learn how to hand over very well to the coming generation. So what about you? And for those of us who have been using the name of Jesus as just for formality, for exclamation mark without a cordial relationship, you can accept his friendship today by accepting him into your life. And it is as simple as ABC. As I will always say, but I'm not going to leave you with the abbreviation but tell you the full meaning. A. Acknowledge you are a sinner. Hence the need for Savior. Romans 6, 23. The B. Says, believe that Jesus came to the world, being the Son of God, who came to die for your sin, and then rose again for your justification. At 4, 12, Romans 4, 25. And the C. Means, confess your sin and also confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior with your mouth and be committed to serve him forever. Romans 10, 10 to 13. And so, if you do this with all sincerity, find a Bible-believing church around your place and fellowship with other brethren to ensure your spiritual growth. Hebrews 10, 25 admonish your souls not to forsake the gathering of other believers. So till we meet next time on PT Square, God bless you and yours in Jesus' name. Bye for now. Peculiar treasure that is you. He calls me, he has made me a peculiar treasure. I'm so peculiar. I'm so glad I'm God's peculiar treasure. Thank you, Jesus. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice, Above all people, for the earth is mine. I'm so glad. I'm so glad.